Hey guys, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I want to talk to you today about death. It's coming for us. Oh look, there it is, poking its head out around the fridge. What are you doing there, you, you malnourished menace? Go on, have yourself a mull of rice if you want on me, mate. Hopefully that'll buy me some more time. Just enough time, fingers crossed, to do a follow-up to a lovely gaming article that I voiced, which was 10 video games that did you win within the time it takes me to make love to Josh Brown. You see, after making that list, more and more titles came up through the earth screaming how they were the hardest of nuts. And you know what? I ain't gonna turn down free YouTube clicks and chances to make pitiful jokes. So yeah, let's get sticky. With this in mind, I'm Jules, your one per list wonder, and these are 10 more video games that kill you in the first 10 seconds. But before we begin, if you will just take 10 seconds of your life to listen to me shill, then I'll let you know about a t-shirt line I've got on shop.whatculture.com which absolutely murders style. Look at me in it. Glorious, isn't it? Check it out and live the dream of owning a dead meme. Number 10, Uninvited. We begin with a game for the point and click fans out there. Uninvited was a quite unnerving and at the same time truly campy horror game which came out in 1986 for the Macintosh and managed to find a stride between puzzles that tested your brain power and moments that saw your brains get splattered all over the place. Case and point the opening moments of the game, in which your protagonist arrives on the scene with a thud because they've done smashed up their car and your younger brother has been kidnapped. I mean, that's pretty shocking for many, but you know what, I've got three younger brothers, trust me, you can bloody have them all. Yet your quest can end before it even begins if you're not quick enough to get out of the car, which will explode and shower the ground with your bodily bits. It's a surprise to say the least, but one that perfectly sets up the balance of comedy and horror that this game exemplified. Number 9. Beneath a Steel Sky Honestly, more people should play this game, as not only is it a wonderful dystopian nightmare sci-fi complete with rich lore and fantastic settings, but it is brutally intense, offering so many ways for Rob Foster to meet his end. Your goal in the game is to help free Union City from its AI overlords and turn the horribly Black Mirror-esque techno sprawl into the utopia that it was meant to be. The game uses a really clever branching dialogue system that rewards careful thinking about situations and solving puzzles to get past enemies, making you feel really on the back foot throughout the entire proceedings. And as you might expect, if the game wants you to be stealthy and think things through, it's probably not best to walk directly back down the stairs in the factory that you started in. Imagine that, being told that you're the hope of humanity, a scientific genius, and then you just get outwitted from popping back downstairs that you just came up from. Not exactly the fitting end that you'd expect, is it? Number 8. SCP Containment Breach Oh, I do not love this game. Well, I love the idea of this game, but it never fails to scare the ever-loving piss out of me. I've gone through more trousers playing SCP Containment Breach than Josh does. He keeps telling me that the crotch wears out, he's a mad shagger. And speaking of horrific images, everyone by now must be familiar with SCP-173, the weird stone potato baby which acts like the weeping angels from Doctor Who and only moves when it's not being directly looked. Looked at. As you can imagine, while not looking particularly scary by itself, when this thing pops up at a moment's notice, it can produce screams not too dissimilar than when your mum makes me introduce food play to the bedroom and she yells, Go banana! There's my one per list. Yet this guy, and in fact none of the other SCPs in the game, are actually the first threat you face, as if you choose to be a naughty little convict and stay in your cell rather than get up and try help control the beasts, then the lovely and faceless corporation running the show will decide to gas you and move on to the next unlock lucky soul. So, you've got the choice of choking to death or having numerous heart attacks by going ahead with the plan. Either way, not great news. Number 7. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective So if you've not played Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, then I would really recommend seeking it out, even if it is demanding ludicrous prices even in second-hand form, because what it does is something truly unique and it approaches its gameplay in a charming and humour-filled way. The concept is, is that you are a spirit, able to jump into situations and change the fates for characters in the game, and this could be saving them from being shot, stopping them from having accidents, or even helping them catch criminals. But as you might expect from that description I've just given, if you're a spirit, then that means you've got to be dead, right? Well, correct my friend, help yourself to a cookie, because yes, you begin the game dead. I won't spoil why or how this came to be, but let's just say things aren't what they seem to be and you'll be barking up the wrong tree with guesses as the game progresses. So yes, bit of a ruse with this one as you do begin the game dead rather than dying in the first 10 seconds, but I guess that's what you call a ghost trick. Puns. I've got them. Number 6. Skyrim 
The Elder Scrolls games and anything under the Bethesda banner as a whole all involve elements of choice. It's kind of their thing. And that choice actually begins even earlier than you think in Skyrim, as before you have an option to choose whether to follow the Imperials or the Nords on their quest to unite and conquer the land, you can decide to fulfill your destiny a hell of a lot earlier and face Alduin one on one. After all, you're the chosen one, you're the dragonborn, you've got literal power and the soul of a dragon housed within your mortal and likely thanks to the character creator very ugly frame and Al this giant leathery beast is here to do you in. Al do in. Wait, is that actually why he's called that? No, never mind, it's not the point. He's here because he knows that you're the biggest threat to his life, above high cholesterol, that is, from an all-meat diet. So if the player accepts their destiny and accepts this fight one-on-one, -on -one, they're likely, probably, m most definitely gonna die. Yeah, mainly due to the fact that you've got your hands still bound, you've got no armor, and haven't even become aware of the power of the dragon shout. So yeah, it'll be a heroic life, but not a very long one. Number 5. Leisure Suit Larry and the Land of the Lounge Lizards The grandfather of gross sex jokes, the Leisure Suit Larry games have been around for decades, each laden with smut and crash jokes that even I, who has built a career out of jokes from 2006, and your mum think is a bit on the nose. That said, if you can look past the rampant, questionable sexual situations, then you'll see that the original Leisure Suit Larry and the Land of the Lounge Lizards is a fun puzzle game of sorts with tons of that Sierra brand weirdness that they were known for. Sierra famously made the King's Quest series, which are rife with death in all manner of weird ways, and Leisure Suit Larry definitely follows this trend. At least in the sense that death is everywhere, because in this opening section of the game, which occurs outside of Lefty's Club, you can simply walk down into the road and get hit by a car. Not exactly exactly the most side-splitting of splatters, but then again it's a quick death and a nice way to see a pancake version of Larry should you so choose. In fact, wait a minute, let's just use some CSI gadgetry here. Zoom and enhance. Is that the same car from Uninvited? Is Larry the reason for the crash in the opening of that game? No, clearly not. Number 4. Tomb Raider 3 as you'd expect from a game about swiping more ancient treasures than Bill Bartleby, the famed granny snatcher of the Southeast, Lara Croft, aka the Tomb Raider, has been put in life-threatening scenarios time and time again. However, upon booting up Tomb Raider 3, you probably didn't expect it to happen so soon, as Lara is chucked right in at the deep end and forced to slide down the mouth of a rather gnarly spike-filled slope. Now, if you're a seasoned and more alert gamer who's managed to not get entranced by Lara's pixelated posterior, you'll jump over the obstacles or or just go around them with ease. If not, well, you're going to be putting the young heroine into more uncomfortable situations than when Adam Cleary asks why he's not on the What Culture Gaming channel banner, and you have to tell him it's because he's only done three videos on the channel. Awkward. Oh, he knows I love him. Number 3. Grange Hill I know you're looking at the title of this entry and thinking, Jules, you wispy little pink wafer, wasn't Grange Hill a TV show based around a British school that began in the late 1970s? How and why was this made into a video game? Well, my friend, the answer to those questions is, I don't know, and also, I don't know! However, what I do know is that the ways you can die in this game, which is, for kids, are hilarious, multiple, and can be done mostly within 10 seconds of booting up this game. You see, the one thing that Grange Hill tries to do is to get kids to stay in school, so any divergence from this path is met with horrible repercussions. Loose paving stones, getting caught on roofs, and my favourite of all, death by drugs. Yes, that's right, you can approach this waif-like looking man in a field as green as Gateshead has ever seen and partake in a bit of the Peruvian party powder. And if you do, you get this lovely message. How charming. Number 2. Home Alone 2 So hands up, who likes Home Alone 2 more than the original? Hmm, not that many actually, I, I expected a bit more. I mean, I do admit that it's a bit of a repetitious sequel, but I will raise you with Tim Curry. What a national treasure. Now before I go on, this game is absolute swill. I hate it from the bottom of my heart. You are bombarded with threats left, right and centre, and the gameplay is challenging to the point of being controller biting. So if you fancy not sliding under jumping bags, maids with umbrellas and falling lights, then you can just go left instead of right and let the concierge capture you. And to be fair, because this game starts with them immediately running at you, if you're not quick enough, he'll just nab you anyway. To be honest, when this game is so hit and miss, you might be off better this way. And number one, Bloodborne. So on the previous list, loads of people commented that I'd forgotten about Bloodborne, and to be fair, I totally had, so thank you all for reminding me of the, pun intended, nightmarish opening. Now for the fans of the Dark Souls, Blood Souls, Souls, Bloodborne, 
series. Being killed quickly at the beginning of these games is part of the obscure learning program titled Getting Good. But for fresh cherubs strolling down through the opening clinic area to the greater and grimmer outdoors, coming across this werewolf was a bit of a surprise to say the least. Not to mention the fact that it cuts you down quicker than I do to Rich when I see that he's developing a slight bit of confidence within himself. I kid, I love that hairy boy. And speaking of hairy boys, this hairy boy I don't love so much, as it's quite terrifying a prospect to face such a monster without a weapon or even a real clue on how this title's combat works. Yet death is necessary, and as such, succumbing to the beast will allow you to progress further, making it a shocking death, but one that teaches you more about what Bloodborne is all about. And there we go, those were 10 more video games that killed you within the first 10 seconds. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, and as always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome. Go follow me on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.